We're so close to beating tier 10 Abbot 12 Zier with Shadow Necro. Forget about bone, forget about blood. The bows are absolutely falling out of favor because of the triple Bloodseeker boss, especially when they have the Suppressor Dome coming up. Bonus just gone. But Shadow is perfect for three reasons. The main being Blood Mist. That's our only defensive skill we have, and we can stay in the Blood Mist the whole time, more or less, while we're fighting the Seekers, pull them together, do the damage Ixfell's Corroded Signet, getting them down. Also, the barriers running, obviously, with Litless Wall and Bone Storms, that if you're coming out of your Blood Mist, you're not straight up going to die to the elemental damage or damage they're generally outputting, because even with 16,000 armor, 70 resistance caps, they're chunking. Now, the second reason, and that's where already changes in the build come in, is that Shadow stuns like crazy. Yes, Shadow has one single ability, Crippling Darkness. Darkness skills have up to a 15% stun for three seconds. Three seconds. Now, multiple Bone Storms going on with all lucky hit, multiple throwing Blight into your opponent, corpse explosions, everything. That means they're getting stunned, then they're getting pulled together by corpse tendrils for another three seconds, then they're getting stunned, then they're getting corpse tendrils, then they're getting stunned and so on. Enemies that are stunned cannot hurt you, but enemies that are also stunned take another 20% multiplicative damage. And yes, we can even emphasize that more with the vampiric powers. Step one, how does the build look? Step two, how to beat the Bloodseeker. So short explanation on how to actually fight them. The dungeon pushing itself is quite easy at this point. You're simply not dying, staying in the blood mist, explosioning everything. I'll present you a couple of versions of this build now because quite some things do change. Key parts is Blitless Wall. Despite that we are actually staying in the Blood Mist a lot, Blitless Wall is still mandatory because it creates all these Bone Storms with a permanent barrier up. So I come out of my Blood Mist, but I still have 35,000 life with my barrier and the Blitless Wall going on. Plus, it can actually block damage due to being a shield. It, it ain't that bad. It's just doing super good. Then you'll need the X-Files Corroded Signet because everyone pulled together, everyone in it together giving you these millions and gazillions and uber millions of procs of the Ixfeld's Corroded Signet on maximum lucky hit, and it's consistently triggering the background. Whenever you see a purple lightning happening, that's when Ixfeld's triggers, and that's with everyone pulled together and having like over 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 million HP. <sighs> you want this. Now, there's also the Ring of Sacrilegious Souls for the lucky hit shanks, maximum life, but also the ranks in all core skills because that is plus corpse explosion, that's plus corpse tendrils. It's just too good to not have it. Plus more corpse explosions, more tendrils is automatically more lucky hit, more Ixfeld's corroded signal procs. Simply fantastic. Talking about more corpse tendrils, that is where the Amulet of the Grasping Veins comes in for the 30% more crit chance. And yes, that brings us up to an 80% crit chance in total and 60% multiplicative damage. The Amulet wants total armor. And here I do also have ranks to all corpse skills and gloom passive plus shadow damage over time. It's quite super brilliant. Now, I will say that we're tinkering with the idea of dropping the amulet so that we can actually play Black River as our weapon. So we can play Black River as our weapon, which would give us even more fuel by death, warp skills, and ranks in huge flash passive, which kind of be fantastic. Currently, we're playing the blighted aspect on our wand, which is the 120% multiplicative shadow damage on everything, and it's happening all the time. And the wand is important for the lucky hit chance intrinsic. Also, critical strike damage, damage over time, intelligence, all fantastic, working perfectly with the withered, working perfectly with the wither paragon board. Now, if you think about it, though, we have the 120% shadow damage here, and we also have the 30% corpse tendrils, which does higher our damage from Excel's corroded signet significantly. Now, if I ran some tests with Black River and the corpse tendrils, I have to say the damage is less than when I'm running it with the Shadow Blind Key Passive. The problem is we don't have the aspect slots to run all three together. Black River, Corpse Tendrils, and the Shadow Blind Key Passive going for the multiplicative damage. For that, we have to sacrifice either the Lilith's Wall or Ring of Sacrilegious Souls. But if we're going already for more Corpse Explosion damage, then sacrificing the Ring of Sacrilegious Souls kind of feels stupid. But also putting the Lilith's Wall off will cut in our armor. So we're kind of here in the pickup where we are going to have to really say, Goodbye to Shadow Blight Key Passive or Grasping Veins. We'll today, also during the live stream portion, get rid of Grasping Veins to kind of try out, might it be more efficient to just completely rely only on the Key Passive together with Black River. But right now I'm this close to clearing tier 10 with this exact version. Another change to think about is Flicker Stab. We're currently playing it for the movement speed, ultimate skill damage, and also the damage reduction from close, which is all 
fantastic. There's no question about it. It does super good. Now, considering that our actual damage reduction, our actual immunity versus the vampiric guys comes from, versus the bloodseekers comes from being in blood mist. There's a world where we might sacrifice these boots for a blood mist corpse explosion cooldown reduction aspect. So we could stay even more in blood mist. Then you could say, why then let us wall again? The moment you're coming out of it, you're vulnerable. And that's where you often get just chunked down that when you're just waiting for your cooldowns, we're just like, Ooh, where is it? That's where you really do want to have the Littlest Wall going on. Also, it's quite nice bonus damage with the bonus storms. T-Bolt's Will is mandatory in my eyes. It's 40% multiplicative damage. And as we are blood misting so much, as we're dashing with the Vampiric Power, we kind of get always the resource back and we're always unstoppable. Now, there's an interesting part here where if we're playing the cooldown reduction on the explosive mist and we're explosive misting so much that we could say you know what screw metamorphosis and instead let's play domination for another 24 percent multiplicative damage against stunned enemies right now you do want flowing veins because flowing veins is just really good for damage over time and we also want ravenous for the bit quicker attack speed on the course explosions and everything to just spam them faster in a row also, you do want anticipation for the multiplicative damage bonus on your ultimate skill to just do more damage. And that brings us then with a Zangren Brace on more fortified, more critical strike chance to the point where we're saying, yeah, why not domination? That being said, the Zangren Brace often runs out versus the boss. So we could consider to not run Zangren Brace against the boss anymore. Then again, it might also be time to finally play the Exhumation Glyph. That we're actually continuously being fortified on corpse consumption to truly keep this up. We'll get to that in the Paragon section. On our gloves, you want critical strike chance. You want lucky hit chance. You want ranks and blight and shadow damage over time. It's fantastic. Also, we need to turn our bone storm into shadow damage. And here, a max roll is preferred. I've been thinking about playing the blood wave build. But the problem with the blood wave build is I will have to stand inside the suppressor dome. I have to then blood wave to stun them. And while I'm doing that, I'm not getting any kind of barrier, which would give us the cool desecrated ground and everything. But it brings us a little bit to the problem of being squishy, because if we then play Blood Wave and then we have to play a focus with triple Blood Wave, it would exactly be the same build here. But we would be missing out on our Bone Storm barrier the whole time. I have a hard time, I have a hard time getting that in check, but I'll try it out for tier 10 definitely so we can get you even more updated builds. It just needs Shielding Storm that you're here with this build having the Shielding Storm going on. Damage reduction from distance is fine. Close will be better or fortified. Maximum life, total armor, shadow damage. Fantastic. And then for the helmet, we do want total armor, max life. Intelligence is good. And then actually lucky hit chance while barrier would be perfect. And this is also a max roll on disobedience to just squeeze our armor up to 11,254. And as you can see, I could go up to over 12,500 armor with the Royal Skulls right now. But I swapped them all out to diamonds. Because right now I can actually play the 21% multiplicative shadow damage plus on the Reapers and not our bonus resistance since we're actually resistance capped plus using an incense and also having the Tears of Blood Glyph in. Otherwise, we have the Skeleton Mages sacrifice for Vulnerable and also the Golem for the Critical Strike. First skills, then Paragon Boards because some things actually change. And here it's very important to have the maximum amount of points in Blood Mist for the maximum cooldown reduction on the Blood Mist. We want also all the points in Corpse Explosion for the Blighted Corpse Explosion. Then we're having Decrepify and the cooldown reduction is just so nasty right now. We essentially, due to the max life of everyone, get our cooldowns always up any seconds. Also the consideration why Flicker Step might go. You need Death Embrace for the little bit of bonus damage reduction and Corpse Channels are now making vulnerable. We don't rely on meta, to be honest. And then this is the most important point, the Crippling Darkness. We have the one and three Reaper's Pursuit. You can't move faster. It's not more beneficial. Gloom is great and Terror is working very good with the continuous stun. Now we want to stun these Bloodseekers as long as possible because, again, stunned Bloodseekers can't do anything. And if they're stunned also, they're kind of losing their Suppressor Umbrella, which is plenty good. No points in Inspiring Leader because we're running Ravenous and that works quite well. And then obviously the bonus damage reduction, sacrifice bonuses, damage reduction, and also critical strike. Now for the Paragon board, it begins with Scourge. First for the multiplicative damage bonus, but also for the shadow damage over time that beats us our shadow black key passive and works very well with Wither. That brings us into the Flesh Eater board. And here we're currently running our Tears of Blood with level five, I think, giving us bonus 80% multiplicative damage, 16 damage to elites bonus, then resistance to all elements on top, and intelligence as well. 
which is quite good, but it takes a while to level up. You see how many points we get in. So we're missing actually two more points down here and up here. Three more points, actually, that we could weasel out. So less damage over time, which is OK. But since we're getting more multiplicative damage, it's just so much better to squeeze out the multiplicative damage. Now on the Wither board, we have the 106 bonus and the 20% for all our shadow damage over time effects to do even more damage. And here we also have the Darkness Glyph only with 40 points. Darkness Glyph interesting though, because whenever you or your minion steal shadow damage to an enemy, that enemy gets 2% reduced damage. And that is damage reduction. And here also damage reduction from shadow damage over time affected. I kinda wanna take this one here as well. It's another 2%, but I just simply don't have the points for it. We're going upwards into the Send of Death board, plus getting here now Territorial. I used to play Exploit for multiplicative damage increase, but honestly, the 10% damage reduction against close enemies is we we bit more beneficial here in this case than actually getting 10% more damage. Lastly, we're going into the Bone Graph board, and here we're having the Control Glyph, because yes, the Seekers are constantly stunned, they're constantly slowed, they're constantly everything, but this damage multiplier is back on the table doing so damn good. He has also 40 intelligence needed to kind of make it work so the points are well spent. What we can do is take 2% max life off to put it in here. If this glyph actually increases its radius every 50 levels they set, right? Uh, I have a bunch of things taken around it as well to get even more bonus out of it. So fantastic for Tears of Blood. We might want to swap out territorial, lose 10% damage reduction, but therefore get more corpse damage and also the continuously 4% damage reduction because territorial is only against close. But if you're then not standing in the range and you get hit by some elemental damage, that damage reduction doesn't apply. Whereas exhumation would always apply. Alternative, we could sacrifice shadow damage over time because we're not in need of more damage, the more damage will happen through our glyph here. Rather go for more defense. So it's either this one out and then we're going to literally swap Axumation in and that gives us also more corpse skill damage, which is huge parts of our damage. And the damage over time then is lower for more corpse skill damage. So it's kind of like the same in green, but we're getting the double dip damage reduction then to make ourselves even more sturdy. I'm going to have my tier 10 dungeon clear here for you, plus the Bloodseeker fine. And generally when I'm going through, I try to kill the rabble and pull the elites with me. So I'm never trying to just kill one elite pack because that's quite useless. These rabble packs always get them killed. But if there's a big elite pack, you just go in until all the small ones are dead. And then you take these elites into the next elite pack to just stack them up with each other because that's where the real strength comes in from the shadow by having them all just stacked up and dying you can't anyways fight versus the blood seekers they get spawned and i always try to spawn them on a bunch of corpses so as i kill like a big mob pack of mobs just have them all in here and right now in this fight it's about get them cursed spam your corpse explosion Get them pulled together every single time that is ready and activate your bone storm every single time it's ready. As you can see, I'm actually standing next to the door frame. So a lot of their effects are simply not hitting me while I can hit them. And whenever you want to do some bonus damage, some bonus lucky hit triggers, you can blood mist in. So you don't have to kind of like keep your blood mist for safety. You can use your blood mist to engage and be having even more bone storm triggers going on try to always have bone storms up on the field because that's the tricky part you never want to run out of bone storms you never want to get in the situation where there's not one bonus bone storm running because that's when your hp is then completely chunking away when you don't have the barrier running right now currently i only have one bone storm that's actually not good i need more there's the second ones and then we're good now very important here is look at my fortify my fortify is almost gone because i chunked some damage down and that's why we're thinking about the exhumation glyph to actually get this periodically up and i also do always have full essence because we're getting continuously unstoppable from the blood mist where we might not even need the vampiric power anymore with the metamorphosis that we just talked about where we can then play the even more multiplicative damage with domination all these things added up together 
fighting like this will get you absolutely up to tier 10. And now I think we need another level on the glyph and then tier 10 should fall super easy. But we'll also try out the Black River version. Links in the description below to Mobilitics with everything you were looking for. And yes, we also got Blood Mist up all the way to tier six already. That is actually working. But for that, we need even more glyph levels now. Check the build though, if you're interested.